Got a few messages uh, last night lighting up your phone? I got a few. Yeah. Any special ones? Uh, my family in the Bahamas stayed up late to watch. I saw my grandpa. So, uh, a lot of friends and family too. High school coach. Any of your peer peers like reach out to you? Yeah, some old teammates heard from Barbosa. So, uh, just a pleasure for him to watch. Well, so uh, B. Rush hit me up, Jeremy Tyler. See a lot, a lot of good guys I used to play with. Is this surreal? That time sink in what you what you what you accomplished last night? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I saw the highlight, and um, it's a great game. Uh, in fact, I only took mm -hmm. my, took I had the ball in my hands for 90 seconds. It was, uh, probably the most remarkable part to me. Have you seen? Missing right there, 90 seconds, 11 dribbles, some of the other stuff that's come out about? Uh, not really, but I've seen some that stand out a lot. Um, Is it weird to you that people were counting your dribble? Uh, There's always somebody counting your dribble. Yeah, I mean, you can't. Analytics are so big these days, so that honestly doesn't shock me. Steve was saying a minute ago, uh, when you get going like that, it's still hard for defenses to cheat because they might not cheat off Steph, they might not cheat off KD. Because you move off the ball so much, do you feel like they give you an advantage? Because defenses really have a hard time keeping up with you. Yeah, and um, that's been my MO since I've been in this league is to mimic guys like Reggie Miller, Ray Allen, Rip Hamilton, Chris Mullen, guys who really use their teammates to set themselves up and did it for decades in this league. So. I thought I did a great job of that last night, especially early, establishing myself around the rim. When I do that, it just opens up the whole game for me. Clay, everybody knows you're a sharpshooter. Why is it still so hard for even good defenders to try to stay with you? I think it's the firepower we have on this team. You know, like Monty said, you can't really help off any of our guys. Everyone's more capable of having a huge night. So, and it's obviously a system I play in, too. It's constant motion. It's free-flowing. I'm always getting on the move. It's just tough for a defender. It wears it down to have you know, to chase around a guy for 40 minutes. I mean, last night, 29, so I thought I did a good job of not being complacent last night. Carry this momentum into tomorrow. And hey, you know, you and kids coming up, you know, there's a lot of emphasis on dribbling, ball handling, and not like moving out of the ball. What, what are some things that, how can you teach that in those sports? I'll start with the team concept. Uh, and if AU, a lot of it's real individual because with the rankings and the hype, it's been like that in South Middle School. You know, they hype kids up to face each other. Uh, he's a top, he's a five-star recruit, but he's not a five-star recruit, stuff like that. You kind of lose the team concept and all that. So I think from a young age, you got to remind kids it's a team sport and you only go as far as the team can take you. So uh, that's my game is so relying on my teammates to get open looks and play off them. And I think it kind of goes hand in hand with what we all do. And that's why I just tell young kids these days that um, you can be efficient in your movement. I mean, it's always great to work on your ball handling. It's huge. It's the best players in the world, the best ball handlers. But um, look at a team like the San Antonio Spurs that have been dominant since 98 for a reason. It's because they play as a real team. With the Clippers coming up, through your mind with that matchup just as intense as it's been over the years? Well, they're playing at a really high level. Uh, the team's had a lot of continuity for the last six, seven years, and we got great chemistry. And uh, there's no love lost between us, obviously, and it's always fun. It's a fun rivalry, you know? It's, uh, it's great to see our fans travel as well. Uh, there's a huge contingent of Warrior fans in LA, so it's a lot of fun. And um, yeah, it's just one of the best matches in the NBA. I all NBA guys on each side of the ball and some tremendous talents. Some point for Lakers and Warriors Clippers became a, rival, a real rivalry. Do you remember what kinds of things brought it to that level? I mean, even before you guys met in the playoffs, you guys, there yeah. was already this kind of sense that, okay, let's yeah. go after these guys. Probably just physical play and uh, competitiveness of both teams. I mean, we were in a, a team trying to break through, make the playoffs. They're trying to do the same thing as far as, you know, make noise in the playoffs. I think both had an edge to ourselves and we haven't lost it. Um, they're still hungry to get to that championship level. You can see that and so are we. So when there's that much on the line, uh, 
guys are fighting, guys are scratched for everything they can get. For so long, there's been we got the Clippers and of course and it's the, it's the Cavs as well. And since you've been here, is the rivalry, I guess, system in the league as as bright as it's been since you've been in the league? Uh. Obviously, there's some history with us, the Clippers. You know, we play each other four times a year and beat us in the playoffs you know, a few years ago. And um, same division, California teams. You know, when I was growing up, it was Kings, Lakers, and I kind of flipped to this Warriors. It's, it's pretty unique, but um, I think it's healthy for the NBA to have rivalries. I mean, you got uh, we respect them. You don't have to like them, um, but. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, same thing with Cavs, too. When there's just a long history of you playing each other, and there's going to be a natural rivalry, you know? It's, uh, it's just a competitive beast we're in, and um, it, makes for a, it makes for a fun, fun series.